evening. Are you guys excited? I am very excited. Because I'm going to be your guide to one of the great ministries, the Star of Bethlehem. This, this has been a ministry for 2,000 years since the original events. And people have wondered about it for centuries. Whether the star was a real event or whether it was something made up by the early church. And, you know, really, that's the two basic positions people have taken historically. Believers, some people believe the Bible is true, and they say, well, the star's in the Bible, so I'm good with it. They don't worry about it. But there are other people who have a more critical attitude towards the star. And uh, they read the story, and they say, wait a minute. That star is described as doing things that stars can't do. That must have been made up. You know, it's a myth created by the early church to add weight to the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Well, those are the two pole, pole positions. We're not going to take either one of those this evening. What we're going to do is to treat the star more like a puzzle or a mystery to be solved. And we're going to go through the Bible and find all the clues we can there. And we're going to compare those against the facts we know from history and see if there's a matchup. And I think you're going to find this completely fascinating. Uh, before I get off into the uh, whole presentation, though, I always like to tell people how I came to do it. So most people want to know that anyway. I'm not an astronomer. I'm a lawyer. Um, and so it's kind of strange that I'm doing this thing at all. But I got fascinated with the Star of Bethlehem, and it became almost an obsession, and that's why I'm standing here. <laughs> so let me tell you how that happened. It began with a young man in our neighborhood who wanted to make some extra money, and he had this great idea of setting up Christmas decorations in people's yard. And he went door to door to everybody in the whole neighborhood. He's going to house to house, and he gets to my house, and he says, Mr. Larson, you're not going to put up the decorations. You're going to look at my book and pick a figure. So I look at the book, and it's full of things like uh, duckies, you know, and, and bunnies carrying presents and things like that. And I'm a deeply committed Christian, so I'm, I just couldn't go there. I mean, so I just looked at the thing, and I blew it. I declined. Everyone else in the neighborhood did it. And the result was that the whole neighborhood lit up with this unified theme come Christmas. People were driving in from out of town to drive through our neighborhood real slow, five miles an hour, all the kids looking out the windows and all that stuff. They get to the Larson house, and it's dark. So I had to do something. And my little daughter, Marion, decided what we should do is make the three wise men. So we did. We made wise men stand about that high, draped them with cloth and all. They looked pretty cool. They march across my front yard every year at Christmas time. So when you have three wise men, what else do you have to have? You gotta have the star. So Miriam says, Daddy, make a star. And you know, I immediately kick in with the, the lawyer's way of thinking. I was thinking, well, what was the star? If I'm gonna make a star, what did it do? What did it look like? How long did it last? And was, it, was it a shooting star? Was it a, did it explode? Was it an angel? I mean, what was the star? So I got sensitized to that question. an article by a PhD astronomer that took the position the star was a real astronomical event. Fascinated me. Read the article. Most of it just went right over my head, you know, because I'm not, I'm not an astronomer. Didn't really understand it, but I kept it. Uh, and I actually put it aside and intended to look at it every year, just as almost like a Christmas tradition is what I was going to do. And I always thought in the back of my mind, someday I'm going to puzzle that stuff through. The astronomer or no, I'm going to figure that out. thing that happened to get me on the path to what I'm going to show you, my church asked me to teach a course called Essentials, which is the biblical basis for the core beliefs of Christianity. And so I'm writing the curriculum for Essentials, and I decided, uh, well, why not put in just a little section in, in the Essentials course about external evidences, meaning uh, things outside the Bible that tend to show the Bible is true. And as I was putting that one together, the star came to me. I thought, my goodness, the star. The Star of Bethlehem, if that's an actual historical event, I mean, how about that for external evidence? You know, so that turned me on totally. And I said, okay, now's the time. I'm not thinking about maybe someday. Let's start. And so I bought some astronomy software. 
and for months, and it actually turned into years, I would go out on the deck after dark, after my girls had gone to bed, and I would go through that article, tap on my computer, look at the software, look at the sky, found everything in the article, eventually found a whole lot more, and a lot of stuff that I have to say, it's pretty darn close to shocking to me. In fact, the presentation, when I first gave it to uh, the essentials class, basically dropped every jaw in the room. Uh, so I thought, well, maybe I'm going to have to show it to more people. So I decided to show it to my entire church. Same reaction. Then other churches started asking me. Pretty soon I'm getting requests from uh, all across the country, even overseas. And I'm winding up going to Slovakia and Italy and all these places presenting the star because the interest is so high. It seems strange to me that he would ask somebody who's not formally trained in astronomy to do such a thing. But I guess maybe that's just the way he works. When, when people seem weak, then he gets the credit. It's basically taken over my life. You know, not, not really complaining, but it's a very big surprise to me what's happened with it. You might wonder, if the star is a real astronomical event, why are we just hearing about it right now? I mean, why isn't, the, why isn't it all disclosed in history books? Why haven't you already heard about it? Didn't you wonder about that? I, I, I wondered that. When I began finding all this stuff, I, I, I wonder, you know, why are we finding this stuff out now? So let me explain that a little bit. There's several reasons that I want you to know. First, we couldn't really know what the skies, ancient skies, looked like before we discovered the math behind the movements of the solar system. That happened in the 1600s. Anybody know who discovered how the solar system works? You hear Copernicus. He, Copernicus figured out that the, the sun was the center instead of the earth. The guy who figured out the actual math that drives the planets, that was Kepler, Johannes Kepler. And Kepler uh, puzzled out the three laws of planetary motion in the early 1600s. Now, those laws hold today. They're math. And they're the same laws that NASA uses and the ESA uses to, uh, to predict where planets will be. When they launch a rocket and it has to travel for 13 years to get someplace, they know where the uh, celestial bodies will be because it's all like a great clock. It's extremely irregular. It's mathematically precise. Kepler discovered that in the 1600s. Before that, we couldn't calculate what the skies looked like in past times. But with Kepler's discovery, we can. Kepler discovered the math, but he did have a problem. I mean, uh, math is, uh, was laborious back then. It was done in your head or on paper. And you have a lot of calculations if you're trying to calculate the appearance of the night sky and all the stars in it. I mean, that's a lot of work. And the, the man used, you know, a quill pen and some vellum probably. And it probably took a long time for him to draw a chart. And that would be accurate. His math was excellent. And he had an accurate picture, but it wouldn't be a snapshot. You know, and if he, if, he, if he calculated the appearance of the sky on the wrong day or the wrong week or the wrong hour, for that matter, he might totally miss something very significant. But that all changed, you know, today. I mean, that's one of the reasons why we're hearing about the star now, because we've taken that math and put it into software. You can see the night sky uh, from any place on the surface of the Earth at any time in history in an instant. And it's so fast, you can animate the sky. Kepler was a religious guy, so the first thing he did, once he discovered these laws, first thing he did, he starts cranking those laws, trying to find, what, the Star of Bethlehem. He wrote two books on it, but Kepler missed the star. And the reason he missed the star is he was looking in the skies at the wrong years. Here's the problem. Kepler had a mistaken... Un From the save point? Yeah. Okay.